We just saw how to create a static view using Timeleaf templates. This video shows you how to create a dynamic view or a view that changes its contents based on data in the request. We have two candidates for doing this. In our Hello Spring controller, we have, uh, we have the Hello handler, which returns a customized greeting using a query parameter or a, a post parameter. And then we have the Hello Again handler, which returns a customized greeting using a path parameter. So let's start with the uh, the first one, the one that uses a query parameter or a post parameter. So I want to use a template to render this message in the view rather than returning a plain string as I'm doing now. So let's go ahead and start with the templates. Go to the project pane and under source main resources templates, we will right click on templates and select new time leaf. Let's give this template the name hello.html. And again, you generally want to add these to um, Git or version control. So in the dialog that pops up, click Add. Now, in our previous version, we had uh, this message just being returned as a plain string. Since now I have the power of, of Timeleaf, I can actually wrap that string in some HTML, which gives it some better formatting. So within the body of my template, I'm going to create a paragraph tag. And this is where I want to put my greeting. So this is where we learn how to in dynamically insert data using Timeleaf. So um, what I'm going to do within the paragraph tag to start is I'm just going to put a default greeting, which will be hello spring. So this would be the default greeting if there was no data passed in. If there is data passed in, I want to replace this default greeting with uh, the value that was passed in. So I need to specify how to do that in the opening tag to my uh, paragraph element. So I'll create a new attribute on the opening tag. And this is uh, some new syntax. We say th colon text equals, and within double quotes, we're going to put dollar sign and then a pair of curly brackets. And this basically says what's between the dollar sign curly brackets is a variable that has been handed to the template. So we get to make up this variable name. I'm going to call it greeting. Okay, so what this syntax does to reiterate is when we go to display this view using the template, Timeleaf will look for a variable called greeting. If it sees one, it will replace the contents of this paragraph element with the value of that greeting variable. So all we have to do is to pass a variable called greeting with our customized hello message into our template, and we will then see that rendered the way we want. So let's go back to our controller and see how we can do that. So first I'll refactor this controller to um, use the template. So recall that we use a template by returning the name of the template. So I'll delete the greeting string and I'll say return the string hello. And then I delete the response body annotation since, not, since I'm now returning a template name. So now the handler method will uh, return the name of the hello template, which will then render that view using that template. Uh, we still need to add our variable greeting, which will be dynamic, which will change depending on the request coming in. We still need to add that and pass that into our view. So let's look at how we can do that. To pass a variable into a view, we need a new object in our method. So um, in my method parameter list, I'm going to add a new parameter called model of type model. And so uh, this is not, this needs to be imported. So I'll put my cursor next to it and I'll hit option enter and select import class. And that will then import the org spring framework .ui .model class. Now this is named a little bit confusingly. I think this is not the M in MVC. It's not that kind of model. It's a, it, it's a class that basically is used to pass data between a controller and a view. Okay. So this is where we're going to put our variable that we want passed into the view. So now within my, uh, the body of my method, I can create um, uh, a, new, a new variable and called, let me call it a greeting of type string. And this will contain my customized greeting. Okay, so that's the string I wanna hand to the template. In order to hand it to the template, I need to put it inside of the model object. So on the next line, I'll say model.add attribute and then the first parameter I give to this is the name of the variable, which in this case we want to call greeting. That's a string. And then I give it the object that contains the value that that variable should have. 
and now no just a heads up these are both the same these you know happen to be both the same just because it made sense to do that that's not required for example I could have made my string variable my local string variable called the greeting and then I would say that I'm passing into my model a variable called greeting with value that has the same value of the greeting so what has to match up is the local variable has to match up with the second parameter to model dot add attribute and the first argument to model dot add attribute needs to match up with the variable name we're referencing in our template okay so those don't have to be the same but they do have to have that one sort of point of agreement okay so now this method uh, creates a string it adds that string as a variable to the model the model is then passed into the view when we render the template by returning the template's name and we should get exactly what we want let's go let's go check it out and see if we do and we're waiting this let's just recall that to get this view I can either use a query parameter or I could submit my form which makes a post request so we'll test out both ways once the server started, we'll go to our browser. Let's test out the query parameter method first. So I'll go to localhost 8080 slash hello and add the query parameter name equals launch code. Okay, so that worked. In order to test that it works with the post parameter, we just need to go to our form. So we'll go to launch localhost colon 8080 slash form. This form makes a post request to the same URL and so that works as well so to reiterate what's happening now this this looks the same as it did before so that's a little bit confusing but if we uh, look at our page and right click and view source we'll see that we're actually getting back HTML before if we had done this we would have just seen the plain string hello job and now we're getting back HTML so we can confirm that our uh, our view is using the template to, to render the view okay so let's go back to IntelliJ and uh, stop the application and one more thing I want to show you is that we can share well actually two more things the first of two more things is that we can share templates across different handlers so now my first template which uh, uses query parameters or, or a post parameter uses the hello template I basically have the same view for my handler that uses path parameters so since it's the same view I can still use the same template and in essence what I'm going to do is the same thing I'm going to remove my response body annotation I'm going to uh, return the template name and then I need to do the same thing as above I need to create a variable to hold something that I want to pass into the view and then I need to add that to the model giving it a name that matches up with the variable name I used in the template I'm having trouble typing today okay now notice now that when I did that model is red that means I haven't there's no local variable called model I still don't forget you need to add that to your method parameter list okay so this will work the same way I'm not going to demo it for you because it's the same behavior you wouldn't see anything different the only thing I want to say now before moving on to the, the really the final point I want to share is that um, notice I created a variable here and then used that variable in the model dot add attribute call I could just do this all in one line I could just take this string that I'm using to construct the greeting hello plus name and then put that directly in this so you know six one half a dozen the other you get the same behaviors whatever you prefer uh, go for it there you can you can do it either way okay so that's how to create a dynamic view using data coming in um, from the request so uh, I want to show you now one more piece of syntax because we're going to need it pretty early on in the next lesson which is how to use a for loop within a template so what I will do now is I'm going to create a new template um, so I'm going to go to source main resources templates right click go up to new time leaf and this template is basically going to be used to display a list of names rather than just displaying one name um, it's going to display a list of names so let me just call it hello list.html hello-list.html okay 
So what I wanna do now is I wanna create some time leaf code that will display, that will loop over a list of names and display a greeting to each person in that list. Okay, or actually let's just make it simple. Instead of doing a greeting, we'll just display a list of names. So what I wanna add now is I wanna add some basic syntax. I wanna make um, a UL element, since I'm gonna have a list of names, not in any particular order. There'll be an unordered list. And then within that list, I basically wanna loop over um, a Java list, a Java list that contains a bunch of strings. So here's how we construct a for loop in Timeleaf. Let's start by creating a new element. And this one, I'm gonna give a special name. This is a new piece of Timeleaf syntax, th colon block. Okay, so this is a piece of Timeleaf syntax that will disappear once our HTML is built. This is basically a container for, putting a, for creating a for loop. Within the opening th block tag, I need to define the iteration of our for loop. So let's say th colon each equals. And then within double quotes, I will say uh, name colon. And then here I'm going to use my variable syntax, dollar sign, curly braces, names. So this is basically saying for each name in a list called names, do whatever I'm doing inside of this block tag. So we need to pass in a list of items, a list of strings that has the identifier names. This is essentially our loop variable. So this could be anything we want. This is the variable name we're gonna use on the inside of our loop. So there is some, some similarity to the syntax here that you've seen in, in other languages uh, with for loops. Now within the th block uh, container, I just wanna put the piece of code that should be repeated once for each name in the list. And um, this will be a list item. And that list item should have a th colon text attribute. And then I just want to insert dynamically the value of the given name. Okay, so let's review this. th block is the wrapper. This is basically the, 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 the line that defines our for loop. It's a, it's a block that outlines and contains the code that will be repeated once for each iteration of the loop. I use th colon each to define my iteration variable, in this case, name. And I reference the list I wanna loop over using dollar sign curly braces. So the reason I use dollar sign curly braces here is this should be already defined. This names list should be passed in uh, from a controller. This, however, is not a predefined variable. This is a variable that we're defining as an iterator variable right now. When I reference that variable, as I do inside the, the, the loop, I have to use the dollar sign curly brace syntax. To uh, within the loop, the, the body loop is a single line, which is an li element, and the text of that li element should be the value of the name one by one as we iterate over the list of names. Okay, so this will display any number of names that we give it, as long as we give it a variable called names, that's something that can be looped over. So let's go back to our controller and create a handler method that does just that. So I'm gonna go to the bottom and create a new public string, hello names, um, just for lack of a better term. Um, and then I want to, I want this to be a get request, so I'll add the get mapping annotation. And then let's, um, let's give this the path, hello dash names. Okay. Now I want this handler to use the hello names or the hello list template rather. So let me return hello dash list. Now for this to work, remember that I have to pass in a list of actual names. So I need to, in my Java code, I need to construct the Java list that has a collection of names. So let's do that as well. Let's go in here and let's say, um, let's make a list of strings called names, and that will be a new array list. Okay, and I need to import the list class. There we go. And so now I have uh, an array list of, uh, called names that contains strings, and I can just add as many names as I want. So I'm going to add the name launch code, the name Java, the name JavaScript. Okay, three is enough. 
All right, so that's my list of names. And I have it constructed. The, the last thing I need to do is to pass this list of names into the template. So remember to do that, we need a model object. So I go up to my method signature, and in the method parameters list, I add a new parameter of type model named model. And then right before I return my template name, I want to say model.add attribute, and we'll call this names comma names. Once again, these two values don't have to correspond to each other. The first argument to model.add attribute is the variable that the template will see. The second argument to model.add attribute is the value that that variable should have. A lot of the time, I tend to just have them both the same. There's no reason to change those necessarily, but just to reiterate, they don't have to be the same. Okay, and that should do it. Let's go ahead and start our application and see how this works. So to test this, we'll have to make a get request to slash hello names. Okay, our application is started. Go to a browser window and navigate to localhost 8080 slash hello dash names. And there we go. We see a list, an unordered list, a bulleted list of three items. And in each of those three items are the items that we added uh, in our Java code. So um, to review, we created a template that contains a loop that allows us to display as many items as are passed in in that list. Uh, and so this is a very, very, very useful tool that you use a lot in your applications. Uh, all right, that's it. With that, uh, with that, we're going to move on to working on a larger ongoing project where we can uh, explore the concepts of Spring Boot, Time Leaf, and more. Uh, in, a, in a sort of progressive fashion. So we'll start that with the next video lesson series.